The church sometimes can be rather divided, whether it is the Catholic Church or relationship with our Christian brothers and sisters in the Protestant world. In our Christian community, it's important to recognize we all have very diverse cultural background, diverse experiences, and we come from different cultural traditions and even religious traditions. Whether we like it or not, the way we look at life, the way we look at God, the, the way we celebrate our liturgy, the way we worship God, they are very much influenced by the traditions that we have been brought up with. So the past will impact the present. So the truth is, past and present, they do affect each other. And so it's important for us to recognize that sometimes if we see situations very differently, it is because we are seeing a specific situation from our own past experience. And sometimes in life, my dear brothers and sisters, it is not a question of logic. It's a question of the heart, the sentiments. And that is the reason why in our relationship with Christians, the church teaching in Vatican II on ecumenism in number 11 tells us, with respect to Christians, let us recognize that there is a hierarchy of truths pertaining to the fundamental teaching of the faith. Not all truths are equal of value, but truth, of course, is a truth. And so it's important in our dialogue with non-Christians or non-Catholic Christians, what do we do? We have to recognize that many Christians, most Christians, they share with us the fundamental truths. All Christians should believe in the Apostles' Creed or subscribe to the Nicene Creed. These are the central tenets of the Christian faith. Of course, when it comes to other doctrines, we have differences. Moral doctrines, we have differences. Interpretation of certain doctrines also have differences. But instead of emphasizing on what separates us in a relationship with Christians, non-Catholic Christians, we should underscore what unites us. That we all believe in the same Lord, in the same God. And we believe those that are really essentials for salvation for Christian life. And we conduct, of course, all those other doctrines, not to say they are not important, they are important. But this will take time to understand. We need to dialogue. Most of the doctrines also have historical circumstances. And if you don't understand history, you will not understand the doctrines. Even justification by faith alone, there were historical situations that gave rise to that doctrine. So when we remove the historical situation and try to see the doctrine in itself, then we will be more objective and more balanced. Instead of being colored by our own prejudice, even with respect to the question of rights, in the Catholic Church, there are many rights that have been accepted by the church, there is no one liturgical right that is right only. Of course, in the Western church, the right we use is the ordinary right. But the church also accepts the three dentine rights, Syro Malabar right, Salo Malanka rights. There are different ways of worshipping the same God, different ways of celebrating the Eucharist even. They are valid because they have been approved and been true to the faith. And even by extension, when you look at other Christians, they might not have all the sacraments, they might even not celebrate the Eucharist we celebrate. The truth is, at the end of the day, let us be clear, when God judged us, He only asked one question, have you loved my brothers and sisters? Even if you have the right worship and the right doctrines, but you have no love, no charity for your brothers and sisters, you won't get to heaven too. But there are many Christians, they don't share our doctrine, they don't share our liturgy, but they are good. 
They are sincere Christians. They try to live the gospel life. And they live a life of charity and humility and service. Surely, these people would have been accepted by the Lord. There are many people in the church today, they are very much wounded because they have not been recognized, because we are not inclusive, because we are not respectful of the differences, the diverse ways of celebration. And this has, so to speak, put people off. And so today, my dear brothers and sisters, Jesus reminds us every soul is important to God. And we must try to include everyone in our church and to accommodate them. And most of all, to continue to dialogue so that together we can be more united in our faith.